Hey DIYers, I'm George from Alarm Grid. Today we're going to be going over how to program a 5800 combo into an L7000. So the 5800 combo, it's a combo detector that does both uh, smoke and heat and it does CO. And it also has an option to do freeze detection. So if the temperature drops below 41 degrees Fahrenheit, then the sensor will actually notify you. Now, this, this 5800 combo, if I'm just going to hold it up right here. You're going to see it has a smoke test button and it has a CO test button. This is going to come in handy whenever you guys are testing the sensor out and you guys want to um, basically make sure that the signals are being sent to the central station. These are the buttons that you're going to want to use and I'll show you guys how to use that in just one second. First thing I want to do is go ahead and get it programmed into the system. So you need to make sure you put your L7000 into programming mode. So to do that, I'm going to start off on the home screen. So I'm just going to click the home button real quick because this is more than likely where you're going to start. This is our home screen on the L7000. You want to hit security. You're going to hit more in the bottom right hand corner. Then you're going to hit tools. Once you hit tools, the system is going to ask you for a code. You need to make sure you use the installer code. Mine is defaulted at 4112. Yours could be different depending if you or your company has changed it. So you want to make sure you use the correct one. So I go to tools, I enter in 4112, and then I'm taken to a screen where it gives me the option, or sorry, I'm taken to a screen where it gives me these options. If you're taken to a different screen, it's because you're not using the correct installer code. So make sure you get this screen here. After you're here, hit program, then you're going to make your way over to zones, and then hit add new. Add new, basically if you have a whole bunch of zones already learned in, it just grabs the next available zone for you. That way you don't have to scroll through the pages and see what's available. You just hit add new and it'll automatically choose a zone for you. Once I'm here, you just go to serial number. Now that you're in the serial number field, it's going to ask you to enter in the it's going to ask you to enter in the serial number for this combo detector. Most sensors you just fault and they'll actually trip. You would think that if you press these buttons down here, they would actually automatically learn the serial number in there as well. However, they do not. This is actually going to start the enunciation and the test from the speaker in the combo. So what instead what we're going to do is we're going to manually enter in the serial number that's on the back of the 5800 combo. If you see here, there's a close. It shows you twist counterclockwise. I'm sorry. To close it, you twist clockwise. To open it, you twist counterclockwise. I'm going to twist it counterclockwise. My cover falls off. And then right here, I'm going to have the back of my 5800 combo you see it has the Ford uh, lithium CR 123 123A batteries and then up on the right hand side on this big sticker you actually see the smoke serial number and the CO serial number I'm gonna get a close-up of this in a second so you'll see that the smoke and the CO serial number are basically the same it's just the serial number the last digit at the very end is one digit higher than the smoke one all right so we're going to go ahead and type it in. I have 007195. Now keep in mind, this is just for the smoke. If you're going to be doing CO, you have to do it for the CO again. If, you, if you're doing this for a freeze, you have to do another zone with the same serial number again. I'm going to show you guys all of that in a second. So uh, this one, I'm doing my smoke detector as my first zone. So I type in the serial number, 007195. I hit done. For the smoke and heat, I'm going to leave it as loop one. For the zone description, I'll go ahead and put it as, uh, I'm going to hit clear, and I'll type in living room. Sorry, I'll type in living room. For the device type, it is a smoke detector, so we need to hit smoke. For the response type, you can do vi fire no verification or fire with verification. What that means is fire no verification means that as soon as smoke enters this chamber right here, the system automatically sends the fire signal down to the panel. What the fire with verification does is let's say you have this in the kitchen and let's say you're cooking something and the smoke from the pan goes up to the smoke. You have 30 seconds to clear the smoke because once the sensor detects it, it gives you a 30 seconds again to check and if the chamber is still filled with smoke that's when it sends the fire signal down so fire no verification it automatically sends it fire with verification it gives you 30 seconds to clear the chamber 
and then it'll actually check again to see if there's still smoke in there. So that'll probably be useful if you're installing this in a kitchen. All right. I'm going to do fire no verification just because I'm putting this in the living room. And uh, alarm report, again, you want to make sure that's set to yes, especially if you're being monitored by a central station. If you set it to no, that means the alarm that this sensor sets off will not be reported to the central station. So make sure that is set to yes. Supervision, you do want to make sure it's supervised. Supervised means that basically if it, there's a low tro if there's a low battery, if somebody messes with the tamper, it'll report that uh, over to the panel. And most importantly, after you're done editing everything, you want to make sure that you hit save. So right here, I've programmed in my living room smoke detector. I'm going to leave the cover off just because I'm going to do the CO detector next and I need to know the serial number. So I'm going to hit add new. Again, you go to serial number. Now my CO serial number is one digit higher. So it's 007. One nine six. I hit done. My loop number is going to stay as one as well. My zone description, I'm going to go ahead and type in living room again because they are in the same location. I'll hit done. For the device type, this is where you got to switch it to carbon monoxide. Yes, response type will automatically set to carbon monoxide. Again, alarm report, you want to set to yes. Supervision, you want to set to yes. And you hit save. Now I have my smoke and my CO. Let's say I wanted to do the freeze detection. Remember, freeze detection uses the first serial number, which is the same serial number that smoke does, except it uses loop three. I'm going to show you guys that now. I'm going to, oh, sorry. I'm just going to go ahead and add new serial number. So that's 007. One nine five. That's the first serial number. You're going to switch this to a loop three. Zone description, we can type in freeze. For the device type, let's see if there's a temperature. You can put to temperature or environmental. I'm going to put it at temperature. And the response type automatically goes to 24 hour auxiliary, which means that once the freeze detection goes off, the auxiliary siren will go off on the panel as well. It won't be a full on um, all sirens going off. It'll actually just be the actual keypad, I believe. Alarm report, yes. Supervision, yes. And then you just hit save. Now, we have three of these programmed in. We have a smoke, CO, and a freeze detection. There's actually two more that you can do, which is actually using loop two for either of the serial numbers. So if you use loop two for smoke and CO, it actually does a maintenance. And if you do loop two for the CO, it will actually do end of life. So usually these last up to 10 years, which means that if you have this, have this, the uh, sensor or the, um, if you have the 5,800 combo program into a panel and you have it set to a loop three, and you have the, I'm sorry, if you have the CO detector serial number and you have it on loop two, then the panel will actually notify you when these need to be replaced. So I guess it has a countdown and after about eight to 10 years, it'll actually notify you through the panel. It'll have a trouble message saying that you need to replace your 5800 combo detector. So we have our zones programmed in. I'm gonna go ahead and put the back cover on before I get a tamper, because if I exit programming and the back cover is off, I'll definitely get a tamper. So now that it's here, I'm going to hit the back arrow key all the way out to my home screen. Hit yes to conf or it's going to allow if you want to, it's going to ask you if you want to allow the installer to re-enter programming. You always want to make sure that you say yes to that. All right. I already hit yes. So I hit the back arrow key one more time and my system is not ready to arm. Now you notice that I didn't have to program in a tamper. That's because it automatically gets programmed in. If I release the cover and I take this off, if you guys are ever changing batteries or anything like that, make sure your system is going to go into a tamper mode. See, tamper three, living room, freeze, and it'll also have the smoke detector because this is all three, all three zones. If you want to shut the system or quiet the system down, just go ahead and tap on the screen anywhere. It's going to give you the option to, dis to disarm. That's to clear the tamper. Remember, to clear a tamper, you do have to disarm twice. And what you got to do is fix the issue. So if the back plate was off, 
you put the back plate on, lock it into place, and uh, you hit this arm, you enter in the master code or any user code, and you have to do this twice. And you have cleared the tamper. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to test the actual smoke and CO. So for the smoke detection, remember the two buttons I showed you earlier? Smoke is to, the, to your left if you're looking at the sensor, and the CO is to your right if you're looking at the sensor. Obviously, if you're looking at it in the camera, it's the, probably the other way around. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the smoke button. You only gotta press and release. If you hold it down, it's gonna give you the, um, the battery level and everything like that. All you gotta do is just press and release. Smoke sensor is good. Battery life is at least 12 months. The alarm will now sound in five seconds. Press test to cancel. So pressing and releasing actually gives you the battery life. And now it's saying in five seconds it's gonna send a test signal. So it sends the signal over to the panel and that automatically saw it sets off a fire. Now, if you're being monitored by a central station and you're doing this to get a certificate of alarm for that, make sure that you call the central station first and you let them know to place your system on test. That way, whenever you send this signal over to the panel and the central station receives it, they don't send the fire department out. Make sure you have your account on test with the central station before testing this out, especially if you're being monitored by a central station. <clears throat> now that we tested the, the smoke, you obviously saw the panel went into a smoke alarm, the sensor went off, and the panel went off. Same thing for the CO. You just press and release. It'll tell you the status of the CO. It'll send the CO detection over to the panel. You'll see here. Oops, sorry. CO sensor is good. Remaining sensor life is at least 12 months. Battery life is at least 12 months. The alarm will now sound in five seconds. Press test to cancel. Once the alarm goes off, you can actually go ahead and disarm that with your master code. See? So before it was actually giving me the option to disarm, if you guys do not see a disarm feature on there, if you just hit the house button right here twice, it'll actually bring up the keypad and it will allow you to clear that CO detection, right? So now we've tested, we've tested the smoke, we've tested the CO, and if you wanna test the freeze detection, you can go ahead and pop this into a, I've seen people throw it into a freezer, I've seen people grab a bag of ice and place it on the desk and then you just place the sensor on top and then once the, once the sensor gets cold enough, below 41 degrees, it'll report the freeze uh, trouble down to the panel. Now, that was just a quick uh, quick video on how to program in the 5800 combo to the L7000 and how to test it. If you guys do have any questions, feel free to email us at support at alarmgrid.com. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure that you hit like underneath, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and enable the notifications so whenever we upload new content, you guys do get notified. I'm George. I'll see you guys next time.